Okay, I just want to get tomorrow figured out, right? Okay, so I got the accountant meeting at 10 and then I'm going to go straight from the accounting meeting right to the office and I'm adjusting till 6. That, that I know, okay? So I got that part figured out. What do I got to do after 6? Uh, On your way home from work, you got to go to ballet and pick Tegan up. Tegan's at ballet, yes. okay. What about the rest of the girls? Where are they? Jara's coming home with Chelsea from TAP. Yep. She'll be home. Yep. Um, Jayla is getting a ride from soccer with Kat. Okay. I will be picking Tessa up at swimming and I'll have Talia with me. Okay, cool. So then dinner's 6.30, 6.30. quarter to 7, 6.30, 6 yeah. dinner. Okay, all right. So that's got us through tonight. And then do you have a conference call tonight or is that tomorrow night? The conference call's tomorrow. No, tonight. 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 At 9. Okay. So after dinner, we'll just deal with homework and stuff and then I have my conference call. Tomorrow, date night. Date night. Yay, date night. We get through, we get a day of reprieve. Okay, good stuff. Did that last scene sound a little bit or look a little bit familiar? Well, how is it that you get off the gerbil wheel and actually find a way to make more time for yourself? Well, you know what? I, I'm old enough to have watched a movie called Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, where he just kept looping over and over again and doing the, the same day, just kept, you know, happening again. And he would, you know, die and then he would wake up and it'd be the same day again and over and over and over again. And there's many times in my practice where I felt just like that, where it was like freaking Groundhog Day. Uh, again, for those of you who don't know me, I've got five daughters. We have five daughters. And it was a busy time, right? And I have the strong commitment to my practice to be able to serve at as high a level as I could and serve as many people as I could. And yet I had this strong commitment to my family and to my gorgeous wife and to be able to spend some time with her and with the kids. And, you know, how do you get to all of the activities? How do you balance it all? How do you maintain your sense of responsibility to your, to your staff, to your patients, to your family, to your spouse and to yourself? Where the heck do you find the time in a busy life to keep yourself in reasonable shape? How do you find the time to uh, enjoy your hobbies, to spend time with your social friends, to be able to plan vacations, to be able to work on your business, not always in your business? Well, I can tell you something. There are answers to getting off the gerbil wheel. And I want to share several important ones with you in this video. So here are three important steps you can take to get off the gerbil wheel today and make yourself a higher priority so you feel like you actually have a life. And let's be clear, this is about a clinical decision making to make yourself a priority as well because the best docs I know are the ones that are PTC, that are present time conscious. And if you've got all this mishigas of ideas and thoughts and stresses and worries and fears and doubts in your mind, you're not gonna be as present time conscious as you could be. So the first thing I wanna talk about is learning to say no. Yeah, right, what self-development guru has hasn't said that to you at some point in the past. Well, let me clarify. I don't want to just talk about, you know, learning to say no, but I want to give you the mechanism that I've found for why it is that people tend to not say no and say yes all the time. It's pretty simple, gang. It's people pleasing. Many people are so afraid of confrontation, they're so afraid of disappointing, they don't want to look bad, that they tend to just say yes. When the default should be no, with a warm-up to maybe, or possibly yes. So let's take a deeper look at this people-pleasing thing. Where does it come from? In my experience, it comes from two very different but strangely aligned places. The first thing is the bigness of the person within. This is like, you know, for me, I learned this in chiropractic philosophy when I read BJ's writings that said, you know, there was a lot more to us than what we thought. And so I bought into that hook, line, and sinker and felt like I could just tackle and take on anything. Defaulted to yes, way more than maybe or no. Right, And so then I would take on all of these tasks, say yes to all these commitments, and then I would become overscheduled, overwhelmed, stressed out, and become a grumpy son of a gun. Right, So learning to say no a lot of times is about understanding that yes, there's a lot more to us than maybe we think, but we are still human and there are limitations of matter and time. The second part of that people pleasing from my experience comes up from the polar opposite of that. It's people who have a lack of self-worth or self-esteem. And what I mean by that is this. These are people that have basically bought into other people's definitions of success, to other people's value systems. They've subordinated their value systems to someone else. Hollywood is great at this. Marketing companies are great at this, right? Letting us know that if we're not, uh, you know, for a woman, we're not a size two, that, you know, we're not sexy. That if we haven't read this book, driven this car, traveled here, holidayed there, done this, done that, that, you know, we don't deserve to be the amazing human beings that we are, which is total hogwash, right? So there are cures for these problems with people pleasing and learning to say no. And let's dive into those things next. 
So there's two really important steps that I want to cover in here. And the first one is doing a core values analysis. Core values analysis is actually a relatively detailed process. So we'll talk about a simplified version of it here, actually two aspects of the simplified version. But a core values analysis is really just getting inside yourself and knowing exactly who you are and exactly who you are not. When you've got that crystal clarity about who you are what, and how amazing, talented and fabulous you are and your amazing contribution to give to humanity, I can tell you then it's a lot easier to say no. It's a lot easier to get away from trying to be people pleasing because you're clear that you're good, you're bad, you're ugly, like all the other seven friggin' billion of us on the planet. Okay, so rather than doing the long form, let me just give you two key things that might help you just today on understanding your core values. The first thing I'd ask you to do is to write a mock obituary. Pretend it's your last day on planet Earth. What is it that's really important to you? What is it that you'd want your children, your grandchildren, and, and you know, other generations to know about who you were inside, what it is you stood for, what it was that was important to you? Okay. A variation on that is to really just quite frankly look at your behavior. Okay. I've got four core values that are being expressed currently in my life, right? My number one core value is family. My number two is spirituality. My number three is health. And my number four is business. So if you look at how I spend time in my day, I'm either interacting, planning, doing things with and for my family, or I'm reading about, thinking about, you know, spirituality or, or meditating, which is another way for me to tap into that, or I'm exercising or shopping or planning, you know, good food to eat and or dealing with mental stress because that's all part of my definition of health. Uh, and or I'm working and planning on my business as a way to help express that aspect of myself to the world. So by just observing your behavior, you can often tell what your core values are. The key thing to living a fulfilled life and learning to say no and getting off the freaking hamster gerbil wheel of always saying yes and not having time for yourself is to really ask yourself and intend your days clearly and say, are the things I'm planning to do and think about today, are they things that are going to expand my core values? Are they connected to my core values? Do they serve me and the things my values serve? When you start to answer those questions on a daily basis, gang, I can promise you, you're going to be saying yes to the right stuff and no to a hell of a lot of other stuff. The second strategy I want to share with you today is the I know I am successful when and then fill in the blanks, okay? One of my coaches stumped me years ago with this. He said, Tom, how do you know when enough is enough? I said, what do you mean? I said, how do you know when enough time with your spouse is enough? How enough time with your kids is enough? How enough marketing is enough? How enough money is enough? How enough vacation is enough? How enough hobbies is enough? How enough sports is enough? How do you know? And I mean, I just asked the dude to just back off because he'd fire hose the hell out of him. And at that point in my life, I didn't have the friggin' answer to one of those questions, right? I can give you the answer to any one of those questions in about 10 seconds right now. But I thought long enough and deep enough about it. So by doing this, I know I am successful when across all of the aspects of the hologram of life, all of the different areas of life, physically, mentally, spiritually, socially, financially, career and family, then by doing that, you can create your own definition of success. And my experience is that every one of us has a slightly different definition of success. It's absolutely critical that you define success for yourself. How can you hit a target you can't see? What, is, what does success mean to you? Likely different in your social life than maybe in mine, which is not perfectly high priority for me. No disrespect, my great friends, right? Um, you know, my highest core value is family, so I spend a lot of time there. I know I am successful when. Now, here's a key to doing this document, okay? I want you to think about it more process-oriented versus outcome-oriented, okay? So, if you're thinking about your physical life, you know, for me, it's I know I am successful when I weigh about 200 pounds. Uh, no. How about I know I am successful when I eat healthy and clean 95% of the time and exercise at least six days a week. That is process oriented. That is something I can influence and control on a daily basis. So get up no more than three statements in each one of the seven aspects of the hologram of life. Get your definition of success. And then as you think and plan your day, your life, your vacations, see how the things that you're planning, the goals and priorities you're making on a daily basis align with your values and align with your definition of success. You'll be saying no a whole lot more often. You'll be saying yes to only the important things that truly fulfill you and bring you joy. And as a result of that, this gerbil wheel you've been on for years, you're going to get the friggin' express lane off and you're going to have a lot more fun and enjoyment in your life. I want to challenge you to be more so you can do more and have more of what your heart authentically desires. Living a consciously intended life full of love, joy, fulfillment and prosperity is not always the easiest thing in the world. But I can tell you from experience, it is definitely the most rewarding thing. 
So get off the gerber wheel, find a way to understand who you are via your core values analysis, make your definition of success, stop pleasing other people, start pleasing yourself, and watch the fun, enjoyment, and fulfillment in your life skyrocket. If you would like to talk to one of our authenticity coaches about how we may be able to be of service to you in your journey from time stressed to fulfillment, joy, love, and more prosperity in your life, we'd be really pleased to book that call with you. All you have to do is click on the link associated with this video and one of our authenticity coaches will be in touch to book a mutually convenient time to talk about where you're at in your life, how you got there, and help you design a plan for how to get out of that place in your life so that you can have more of the joy, fun, prosperity, and fulfillment that we've talked about on this video and in others. So again, this is a completely free complimentary service on our part. Uh, people may ask us, why do we do that? Well, because I believe in this old quote. It says that a rising tide raises all ships. So we'd be happy to be of support to you, help with you on your journey. Just reach out, click the link associated with this video, and we'll be in touch.